So this presentation for the OE Global Conference is a collaboration of three participants in the Open Education for a Better World project supported by UNESCO. Two of us were involved in this Open Education for a Better World project as a mentor who supported the development of open education practices. We were, we were matched and came together through the UNESCO project, Open Education for a Better World, that brings mentors and project developers together to create and use open educational resources. So three of us, myself, Sanjeevni Mahaling and Helen, we are the three who are, will be, who are presenting this presentation. So myself, Dr. Rekha Chavan, Assistant Professor in Department of Education, SNDT Women's University, Mumbai. Along with me, I have Dr. Sanjeevni Mahale, who is Associate Professor at School of Education, Yashwantrao Chauhan, Maharashtra Open University, Nasik, India. And I'm Helen Ward. I work with uh, Lakehead University here in Ontario. And I also work as a learning designer for the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. Open Education for a Better World project is a UNESCO funded tuition free uh, international online mentoring program established to unlock the potential of open education uh, in achieving the uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, we work as a developer. Uh, so Sanjeev to work as a developer, myself work as a developer and a mentor and Helen as a mentor. And I present, I uh, participated as a mentor for two years as I felt there were elements of OER and open educational practices that I could offer to those who had not yet experienced these concepts or pers perspectives. I've been involved with OER and OEP for many years. So just now, as I mentioned, it's a UNESCO funded project, uh, specifically focuses on the sustainable development goals. And my project was, both of us project was specifically focusing on the sustainable development goal four, and it's a six months mentoring program. And specifically, this presentation is the result of several of these mentoring protege partnerships from the 2019 and 2020 OE for Better World cohort projects. We'll explore a few key elements in the project development where the mentor's role as a facilitator, catalyst, and guide can enhance the creation and the development of open educational resources as a direct result of working within OE for Better World projects. We share some of the experiences and knowledge building that happens as a result of our uh, extensive interactions and collaboration, and which focuses more mostly on the explicit knowledge building for the professional learning within the supportive mentoring relationship program. Our experiences varied based on our roles within the projects and the mentoring relationships that we, we developed. So when we look at our roles as a, when I look myself as a developer and a protege, uh, it was more of a, a technical support uh, by way of making use of digitals. And even this is applicable for Sanjeevni uh, when she worked as a developer, so in both of our case, it was more of a technical support, which was most, mostly required by the mentor. And we both used the Moodle and Mookit platform. And we worked on the ideas on how to do the work. When I look myself as a mentor, it was more of a collaborative planning, decision making, and format to support the work, which I learned from my mentor. And same thing, same legacy I wanted to carry forward uh, with my developer this time when I look myself as a mentor. Uh, well, 
there was more of a interactions and engagement and this interaction and engagement was not only limited for the academic or only for the project but it was beyond that particular project so in a real sense it was a cross culturing uh, relationship wherein we were also sharing the uh, uh, you know cultural uh, you know uh, experiences and this is how it was more of a reciprocal relationship wherein we both shared our cultural practices and this cross cultural mentoring really promoted uh, the learning for both mentor as a developer our interactions and engagements led to new spaces and places where reciprocal learning took place for me I was introducing Eureka to the Twitter, my Twitter community, and for Sanjevni, it was introducing me to her WhatsApp community. Yes. So my journey was not only limiting within my nation, but it, it was more, more of an interactive, you know, international collaboration, wherein Helen introduced me to the Twitter community. And it was not only limited with that, she also introduced me with a lot of technological tools which I was aware of, we was, which I was not aware of earlier such as the answer garden, we video, Padlet, Google Slides, and Google Docs. So how to make a use of these collaborative tools in designing the course. So this was a learning wherein I was also learning the technological skills in this journey. And this learning continued with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic when um, transition had to be made to the uh, OE for Better World Eduscope ecosphere. Well, so it was more of a relationship building. Our relationship was getting developed day by day by way of our interactions, our engagement, our collaboration. And this is how it was more than the academic guidance rather than the sharing and caring for each other. And the role of mentor in these projects is, is as a facilitator, catalyst, and a guide for the development of the project and for the protege. We learn from research, it provides us with guidance in how to create an ethos of care um, when mentoring. There are ways to engage the protege, key findings about how to be culturally responsive when mentoring, the core competencies and qualities that mentors should acquire and ethical principles to abide by when mentoring. So references for this particular graphic and the, and the research from Sanyal and uh, both Johnson and Sanyal in 2017 will be provided at the end of this presentation. Before we begin our story, let us have a look at the elements of ethos of care that make up the ethos of care. Neil Lodig has extensively uh, explained this notion of care as a basic human element. Care is not gender specific or no, neither it is domain specific. It is more than that. It is more about the human rights and the moral orientation. It is, it includes the care, which is need-based and it's a moral orientation. And it's a reciprocal and relational, both self and the other. So me and my mentor uh, developed the relationship and it was more of a vibration, which includes the caring and shared control. So from this image also, we can uh, relate with the relationship which was getting developed through our journey. And that leads us to open educational practices. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, within the OE4BW project, both uh, me and uh, this was a kind of a creation of open course. So my open educational practices uh, talks about how I designed the OER, uh, how I designed the open course by making use of the different OERs which are available. And the creation of open educational resources can lead to the development of open educational practices. Uh, for this, uh, I mean open Open education for me is more of a uh, way of carrying out the education uh, using the digital technology. It aims at widening access and participation to everyone, uh, removing the barriers 
and making learning accessible and customizable. And for me, um, it offers multiple ways of teaching and learning and building and sharing knowledge. It provides a, a variety of access points and access routes from formal to non-formal um, education and, and connects the two. This definition comes from the European Union uh, document to opening education um, written by De Santos. And Cronin talks about um, in her research talks about collaborative pedagogies and, and utilizing digital technologies in, in order to provide um, points of interaction and, and peer learning and knowledge creation, co collaborative knowledge production and, and empowering learners. And this connects to research by Pastavisius who talks about um, supporting students and, and participants in ways of, of knowing, designing, planning and assessing their their learning. And mentoring skills uh, need to move into open educational environments. So the, um, in open educational environments, mentors become uh, or should play the role as catalyst and spark ideas from other points of view, um, ensure that the actions that actions result from some of the ideas that are sparked, uh, consider options and alternatives that could go take a project in new directions and, and echo or illuminate ideas that resonate for, for the protege, for the uh, developer of the project. Uh, well, mentor as a facilitator, the skill which is more emphasized when we look at mentor as a facilitator is a communication skill. So when I talk about communication, it is an emphasis on information sharing. It is a sh collaboration. It is more about the development of the tools which are required for OER. And it is also includes the support and ways to manage and navigate the project content. So it is more of a direction. It is more of a facilitator, facility provider when we talk about mentor as a facilitator. Well, when we look at mentor as a facilitator, it also involves or it also emphasize on active listening using a variety of ways to maintain the contact because more the contact and collaboration, more will be the learning and more will be you are comfortable with the particular work which you are undertaking. And this can be possible by way of making use of different technological platforms such as Google Meet, Zoom, Skype, email and WhatsApp. And let me tell you, this, all these platforms were explored and used by taking into consideration the contextual need and the convenience and the feasibility. And so these were the most used platform uh, looking at our convenience and feasibility as far as India, collaboration between India and Canada is concerned. And mentor, and a mentor in open educational spaces is a guide navigating through the project, um, you know, how to create the, the OER that is envisioned by the developer, setting markers for times and spaces, uh, helping manage calendar events, scheduling online meetings, sharing links to documents, um, supporting with, uh, with pathways with the developers, not doing it for them, but, but uh, sharing ideas and presenting alternative ways of doing that match the vision that the developer, the project developer, um, and the project need. And when mentoring in cross-cultural contexts, the norms of collaboration are an important contributor to success. These include promoting the spirit of inquiry, pausing to think before asking or answering questions, paraphrasing to ensure understanding, you understand what the, the developer is, is hoping to accomplish, probing for specifics, um, putting ideas out there. Sometimes they, they work for the project and sometimes they don't. And looking, uh, paying attention to your own feelings, in particular your reactions and the choices of words that you use when meeting with a, with a protege or a developer, and presuming positive intentions. The developer, the protege is there to um, enact change in a positive way. And for Sanjivni, this was the first time that she was experiencing open educational resources, online platform development, 
and uh, her vision was for a action research projects to be developed within her um, her local uh, language, her vernacular language in that part of India. So we worked very closely to develop a dual language track through her project to make sure that everyone could engage with the content. Well, in my case, my mentoring story started as a developer and it ended as a mentor. So in 2019, I uh, acted as a developer wherein I designed developer course on designing collaborative instructional design. Uh, it was a course uh, deployed uh, for three weeks. And uh, the focus of this particular course was on student active and collaborative learning. So a lot of collaborative tools were used, which was introduced by the mentor, Mrs. Helen. And this is how uh, focus was given on collaborative learning and active learning. After that, uh, next year in 2020, I applied as a mentor and therein I got a chance to guide my developer. And this particular guidance was given, keeping in mind what all the things I have learned from my mentor. And I just wanted to carry forward the legacy, what I, what are skills I learned from her. And same thing, I did introduce this to my developer. So this is how my story started as a developer and ended as a mentor. And I wish to continue my, this particular journey as a mentor in the future as well. And my mentoring story involves each one of these specific elements, but the, the uh, benefit is that the mentoring project, the, uh, both of the mentoring projects has stretched beyond that initial work that, that was done to create OER in context in India and has resulted in several opportunities for um, continued collaboration and continued storying together including this OE Global Conference presentation. Well, our journey did not stop there. I got a chance to go physically to Slovenia and give the presentation on my project develop. So it was for the first time I was traveling internationally and there again, my mentor came to help me out. She guided me how to go about, she helped me in my presentation. And apart from that, she also helped me uh, in uh, you know making use of the different tools such as the map, how to make use of map and how to do the financial uh, uh, exchange and all those things. So it was beyond the uh, academic uh, guidance. It was a guidance also related in a real life situation. And along with me, yes, uh, last year, Sanjeevani also got a, a chance to give the presentation in the EduScope conference because of the COVID, the things were not possible for Sanjeevani to go physically and give the presentation. So she got a chance and it was also her first time experience wherein she was presenting on an international platform. So this is how uh, both of we were doing the things for the first time as far as the international presentation was concerned. And we've had an opportunity to write together. Our first uh, uh, publication um, just happened this past summer, and it was Cross-Cultural Mentoring, a Pathway to Building Relationships and Professional Learning Beyond Boundaries of Country and Beyond Boundaries of Institutional Contexts. So we'd like to thank you for attending. Please share your thoughts or add any comments about the presentation to the Jamboard that we've set up for this purpose. Thank you again. Thank you, thank you again.